you're looking for a great footballer, then get over to One Football. One Football have not just got your latest rumours, latest videos, and latest news about your favourite teams, but they tell you about the entire Premier League and football pyramid. So get over to One Football and download it now in the link below. Quicker, do it now. What's going on, everyone? It's Mike back again, and uh, this is your match preview. Sheffield United versus Everton at Bramall Lane on Boxing Day, 8 o'clock kickoff. A game that, before the Man United game, I was absolutely buzzing going into. You know, I was thinking we're going to get a result against Man United, we're going to beat Sheffield United, then we got a tough game against Manchester City. Yesterday was a reality check for me, because I don't think we're as good as I think we were. We... I think we are. So it was a bit of a, a kick in the balls for me yesterday, to be honest. Um, I think it's going to be a tough game against Sheffield United. We all know where they are in the league. They're really struggling. You know, looking at sort of their, their fixtures that they've played. They've played most of the teams in the league now and they're still, they're still absolutely rock bottom with two points, two draws and 12 defeats. Yes, Sheffield United side is not the same team we played last season. And look, they're eight points clear. They're eight points adrift at the bottom, I think, or ten points. Sheffield United are down. They're relegated. You know, there's no way they're picking four wins up and everyone else around them is losing four games. They're just It's not happening. Um, Chris Wilder, I'm surprised he hasn't been sacked yet, although I appreciate that his owners back him. And credit to them. Credit to them. But, you know, Everton got to go into this game with confidence. I think it was a mistake messing with the back four against Man United. I think it was a mistake playing Sigurdsson and Gomez together. There was a lot of issues with that Everton team. And obviously, you know, Richarlison come out this morning and said he's all right. I'm hoping that he's fine. I'm hoping he's going to be available for the game. Although if he has got concussion, he may not be. Um, And that will be a big blow. But Everton should have enough to beat. A very poor Sheffield United side. You know, we're 24 points ahead of them. Everton are joint third in the league. It's a game we've got to get a result. You know, we've got to get back on the winning track again. Um, the the Man United game was disappointing. And if you haven't watched my sort of recap video, that went out live uh, earlier today. So go and check that out. I did it with Saeed from United Central. But it was a very disappointing performance. And Everton don't want to carry any of that into this Sheffield United game, in my opinion. We need to be going into it being you know, bullish where required, ambitious, strong, not scared. You know, that that's that's the biggest thing I would say. Not scared of you know, prepared to be playing out the back. You know, the last the last four games, Everton have played some tough teams, Chelsea, Leicester, Arsenal are struggling, but Arsenal aren't a bad side on paper. And then Man United and you know, we've been fine in the league. We've been comfortable in the league, but we really struggled. We really, really, really struggled against Manchester United last night because, you know, if we had to play out from the back or we did play the ball into midfield, we just had nothing. You know, Sigurdsson, who played OK against Manchester United, I'm not going to put him in the same bracket as, as Gomez, but Gomez was shocking. Gomez was absolutely shocking. It was one of the, probably one of the per- worst performances I've seen from Gomez in an Everton shirt. And, He's not been playing well this season at all. And I'm just worried that he might, if he plays, he might take that form into this game. Because let's be fair, we, you know, we're going up against a team that are fighting. That's not an earthquake. My dog is shaking on the other end of the bed. Um, You know, we need to go into this game with, we need to win it in midfield, you know, because Sheffield United, although, although, they're bottom of the league. They have still got some decent players. It's not like this Sheffield United side do not have some OK players. You know, you look in their squad. They've got Premier League experienced goalkeeper in Ramsdale. They've got players who played so well last season, like Bulldog, Egan. Uh, they've got, obviously, former Everton man, Jaggy Elka, uh, Ethan Ampadu. These are players defensively that, that you would think are better than where they are in the league. Then you go into their midfield and they've got Ludstrom, um, Ollie Norwood, I think Norwood, when he played last season, played okay. And then 
up front is where they struggle because they've got no goals in them. You know, McBurney's not a goal scorer, really. Billy Sharp got a couple last season. You know, Moosett's done very little. McGoldrick, he got two against United, but that'll probably be his two for the season. And they've got Ryan Brewster, who's more bothered about winning Champions League medals when he's not even on the pitch than, than playing football. So, Sheffield United are going to have an equally tough time against Everton, but Everton have got to go there, be expansive when required not necessarily play that low block, that flat back four, because they, they tried to play that against Manchester United. And again, Coleman did get exposed on the left a couple of times. You know, uh, Greenwood, Mason Greenwood almost scored a goal from the ball coming in from that side of the pitch. They had a couple of chances, Man United, from that side of the pitch. So Mason Holgate stepped straight back in for me in this game. And on top of that, I'll go back to playing with a sort of Allen-type player in midfield. And I can't believe I'm about to say this, but Tom Davis starts over Andre Gomez in this game for me, if Allen's not available, which I don't believe he is. So Tom Davis has to come in and he has to be combative in the middle of the park. We all know that Tom Davis is not a Premier League midfielder. He's, he's barely a, a midfielder, but he's better than Gomez based on current form. So he's got to play. You know, so my Everton team is reverting back. Pickford in goal, because again, Olsen looked a bit ropey, although we did make a couple of good saves. But Pickford in goal, left back, Ben Godfrey, Mina, Keane. Over on the right-hand side, Mason Holgate steps back in. Midfield three, Sigurdsson, Tom Davis and Decore, with, with Sigurdsson playing slightly more forward. Touch, Wood, Richarlison is fit, because if he's not, Bernard scares the shit out of me because, you know, again, unfortunately, he's proving that physically he's not up to the Premier League. Up front, Dominic Calvert-Lewin, and on the right has to be Iwobi, who again had a poor game against Manchester United, but his league form has been good, so we've got to back him. So, look, for me, Everton have got to go into this game confident, expressive, on the ball, be prepared to play through the channels, lose Dominic Calvert-Lewin's pace. You know, I've got him as my captain in my dream team because I expect Everton to, to, to beat these comfortably. But if we don't, then that's going to be very disappointing. It's going to be very disappointing to go to a team that's bottom of the league and not turn up especially how well we've played against the teams that we needed to, to get us back challenging for top four. Because two weeks ago, this preview two weeks ago was going into the game against Chelsea and me and John sat there going, I can't see our next points coming from anywhere. Then all of a sudden we turned nine points over in a week. Everton have got to go into this game and we, we've, we've got to go in and win because... You know, Leicester have got a tough game against Manchester United. That's a draw. Everton win. Everton can go second this week. You know, Everton are having a good season in the Premier League based on the fact that we're winning games. You know, I think if we win, this will be our ninth game, but we've got to win. You know, we can't be complacent because we've seen it this season against teams like Burnley, Newcastle. Everton fall short. You know, losing to Southampton away, given on their 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 way that they're playing isn't really a disservice to Everton. But Newcastle, you know, losing at home to Manchester United twice, by the way, in the Carabao Cup as well. You know, disappointing results. Burnley, disappointing result. Everton can't afford to have another disappointing result in this game, which is why I'll go for the strongest possible team, reverting back to the team that we had against, you know, the Leicesters and the Chelsea's and the Arsenal's. Um, Another thing is Dominic Calvert-Lewin's got a score again. Um, he he almost got one against Arsenal, but it was it's been chalked off and get, given to the Arsenal lads, and which is disappointing. But it was I think it was off target if Dominic Calvert-Lewin had, had glanced it. I think it was going wide if it didn't hit the Arsenal lad. But we need a goal from him just because I just want him to keep on that that run of goals. You know, Son slowed down. Salah, I think, got two, which makes him either top of the scoring chart or second top. I just want Dominic Calvert-Lewin to be in there, you know, after Christmas. I want him, you know, I love Dominic Calvert-Lewin to hit 20 goals by March. There's no reason he can't. And with them goals, push us up the league and continue to push it up the league. Because Everton are not going to win the title. You know, we, we proved last night that we need more squad depth. We don't have it. You know, we don't have it. Man United, where Everton could bring on fucking Chenk, Tosson and Bernard, Manchester United could bring on Martial and Rashford. I mean, that's that's the core difference. So, 
for me, this is a game where Everton have got to be dominant, got to show all the full our authority, got to get a clean sheet because, as I say earlier, the Sheffield United side, it's not like they score bags of goals. You know, it's really not like they score bags of goals. Defensively, they've been all over the place this season. They've been nowhere near what they were last season in terms of, you know, the overlapping fullbacks and centre-backs, the balls into the box, the dominant teams, the, the strong performances. They've done none of that this season. And their stats, you know, this is, this is a team that has scored eight goals this season. Eight. Just eight goals in 14 games. They've got to... Uh, they're not even shooting shots on target, 41. And you compare that against Everton. And Everton have got... Make sure you download the One Football app. Everton have scored 25 goals and had 67 shots on target. We've hit the crossbar more. We've hit the post more. Everton have just been outscore, outperform, outdefend... There's no reason Everton should lose this game against Sheffield United. But there was no reason we should have lost against Newcastle. There was no reason that we should have got a point against Burnley. And we only got a point against Burnley because Fabian Dalf's hamstring went on holiday. So, look, Everton need a win. I'm confident Everton will get a win. I think that if Everton wants to be progressing and targeting top four football these are the games that we've got to consistently win because we bottle these games. We bottle these games. And I, I just don't want us going into this game with no confidence after beating after being beaten by Manchester United in a cup competition. That, look, I was absolutely gutted we lost and I was very, very probably angry. I was angry in the match reaction. In hindsight, look, I, I don't. I don't agree with it, but I always give my emotions as to what I think and we were poor. You know, we were so poor. Man United could have been 3 0 up at, after 20 minutes. Can't keep doing these one off random shit performances, which destroys the confidence of the players. You know, we went four, we went seven games unbeaten. You got a draw against Liverpool, and you sort of sit there and go eight games unbeaten, top of the league, Everton are flying. Then we went to Southampton and didn't even turn up. And then our season fell apart for the next seven games. We can't do that now. We've lost to Manchester United. We can't fall apart again because the gap will increase. And although everyone's saying that the points are very close in the league now, yes, no team has broken away. But between where Everton want to be, which is sixth to first, it's two points. That's it. But the more games we play, the more that that gap's going to spread out. So Everton really need to just push on, turn this game over, win comfortably, a nice 3-0 performance. And then two days later, we're going to play Manchester City at Goodison Park. And that is a game that, again, Everton have got to step up for. But you'll get that match preview just after the Burnley game, which will be a late one. So, guys, it's been a pleasure. Keep smiling, stay safe, have a absolutely magical Christmas because that's what this is all about. And um, I'll see you soon, guys. Peace. Mm-hmm.